Oh, it's wonderful. Wonderful. Wonderful trip. I've enjoyed all of it. Everybody's been so nice and wonderful. And just been happy all the way. We want to toast C-47, all the folks who have made this weekend so memorable for us and so moving and, and uh, a weekend we will never forget, any of us, and especially we're grateful that our uh, grandchildren, great-grandchildren will have these memories uh, to carry into the next generation. And I, I commend you for your mission to remember and to honor and to lay the foundation for the future so that next generations will have the same commitment to liberty and justice and peace. Cease 47. Cheers. 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 Nous sommes très heureux d'accueillir, je vais commencer par notre invité d'honneur, M. Henry Smith, vétéran du 291e régiment d'infanterie de la 75e division d'infanterie et sa famille. I think when we first started this we expected just he and I would come and just observe, you know, be in the audience and just observe. We had no idea that uh, there would be such an outpouring, outpouring of love and and appreciation and respect and honor. We didn't, we had no anticipation of that. À l'oubli succès de l'indifférence, cette plaque que nous avons dévoilée doit servir à enseigner aux jeunes générations cette zone sombre de notre histoire, 70 années après les combats. Therefore, we are here to thank one more time the combatants of this terrible war, to thank the veteran who is here today. I speak for all the inhabitants of Yelsan. They want to recognize the thousands of soldiers who gave their life for us for our freedom. Dear veterans, you were 20 years old, you were young and brave, and you came here for our parents and grandparents. One morning of June 1944, you arrived out of the sky or by sea. You saw your mates falling by your side on our land, and despite your injuries and your grief, you are here today. So you gave us your bravery and your best years, and we thank you again. May everybody live in peace.
almighty and eternal God, who in all generations hath been the Lord of far flown battle lines. We pause in the sacred hush of this memorial moment to acknowledge thee, for the goodness and guidance thy providence has brought to our lives over the years. We pause to remember and remember for all time the brave soldiers, both American and Belgian, who, loving liberty more than life, counted not the cost, but here made the supreme sacrifice of their lives in order that those of us who were spared in the battle and who live on to this day would be able to know and share the fruits of freedom and victory and be spared the agony of slavery and defeat. O oh God, let us never forget those who fought and died here, neither those who fought and lived on. And in the name of those who gave that long last full measure of devotion, Lord God of hosts, be with us yet, lest we forget, lest we forget. In thy holy name we pray, amen. But one of the, the wonderful moments for our family was to go into the school and uh, just we met some adults who had gone to that very same school and to see the children uh, with their welcome signs and to see the, the fruits of that battle were a place for these children to study and grow and, and mature and, and work for the future. So it was very meaningful and to go to the church and yeah. see it's the... Hard, hard for me to talk without it. it. makes me want to cry. It means a great deal. He's, he's crying because he's so touched by your kindness and all of his memories. Memories of being here a long time ago when he was a young man. So thank you so much. Thank you. It's just... But I would like to tell you that when I've prepared your visit with the school, they asked me, what can we do to welcome the, the veteran? And I told them, it's up to you. I know that if you let the children do the things, they will do it with the heart. And I think it's what happened yes. yesterday. That's, That's right. the reason I couldn't talk to him, because I knew he was going to cry. And I just I couldn't talk. But I let him ask me questions. But they were looking at you with big eyes yes, and of right. admiration yeah. and you, it was so uh, so nice to s it's a good memory it's one of the best memory yeah. for me to see you amongst the children yeah. Yeah. one of them asked me what, what my job was did you hear it that I said I was a machine gun and he said oh boy <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big fox, fox holes covered with three earth, and where the, the artillery begin to, to make his job, the German were quite ready because they were not hit. They were in good, good, good situation, good position. So the your your regiment advanced through the field, and the German uh, pinned down the man in the middle, they couldn't go forward and they couldn't go back. They, couldn't they raise were stuck up, in the middle of the field. Couldn't raise up or yeah. turn over. Yeah. And, do and you had olive, olive drab uniform. Yeah. No white, no, no white No uniform. white, the Germans had the white. Yeah, but not you. We had this. Yeah. That was the worst day of my life. The pires jours de sa vie, c'est ici. I crawled, all, I crawled all the way down, never back down into Grand Ole Ole. Daddy. Yeah. Because I... Daddy. I've... I've... Uh, I have so many memories, I don't know which one to say special. They're all special.
back to the battlefield, although I don't know, it got up. That really made me cry, I just couldn't hardly stand it. It's so low that I laid out there in that field, and it was snow, more snow then than it was today, and, and it was a lot colder. And, and lay there for eight or ten hours and couldn't move. And so it was really hard on me. I'd say I was about, about right here. Right here? Yeah, I think uh, probably my father hasn't talked a great deal about the war. Uh, you know, when I was growing up, a few stories, but not in detail. So going and and seeing the the big hill that he had to climb, and to know that he was under fire when he was going up the hill, and to realize that his friends were killed, and so many people were killed in front of him, and so many news. Seven, I think it was about 75 or so killed right out in front of me, but maybe 20 yards and it was terrible. But we were able to see where he laid down. One of the real meaningful moments was to go and see where he actually laid down. We could find that place. And seeing the tank, where the tank come up and, and we got knocked out I and mean, I crawled back around by uh, the tank, I seen one of my friends from the, from the waist up sitting on the ground and the rest of them had blown away. It, it was terrible. <laughs>